A cochlear implant is a very special type of hearing aid. It's cleverly engineered to give sound information electrically to the inner ear or cochlea and to the nerves that serve it. It has got two main parts, an external or outside part that you can take on and off when you want to hear. And then the internal or inside part is surgically placed there. The two work together to decode sound information from the environment around you, turn it into an electrical code, which is then activating your inner ear and your brain then receives that information and decodes it into the speech and the sounds that you hear from around you. A cochlear implant should be considered for anyone whose hearing needs are not being met with the current best hearing aids that are, have been taught specifically made. Uh, let's start there. Sorry. A cochlear implant should be considered for anyone whose current hearing needs are not being met by the best hearing aids that have been adapted for their hearing needs. So for these patients, it is extremely important that we consider cochlear implants. Now, the assessment of whether someone would benefit from a cochlear implant or not requires multiple specialists, each with a different area of interest, who will look at this, look at each patient individually and holistically to look at their individual hearing needs. Then all the specialists come together to decide whether a cochlear implant is the right method of treatment for our patients. And if so, how much benefit can they expect to see? This information is then converted back to the patient, conveyed back to the patient, where the patient is helped to make a decision as to whether they would choose for a cochlear implant or not. There are mainly two groups of patients that I do cochlear implants for. You can split them up into children and adults. The children are often born with profound hearing loss or with hearing loss that is likely to become profound very early. And the problem for these children is that they won't have enough sound information to develop speech and language. The other group is the adults or the older or the older patients who have had enough sound to develop speech and language, but then either suddenly or progressively have lost enough sound to not get benefit from their hearing environment. For the children, we know that there is a critical period of development where the brain can learn to understand speech and develop speech. And if we miss that critical period, it becomes very hard for any child to develop speech and language. We also know from new studies that the younger we do copper implants on these children, the better their speech and language outcomes are. So the youngest child that I've implanted is six months of age. Any younger than that, there is a risk to the child in terms of the surgery and the anesthetic. So that's the youngest we would, we would operate on. In terms of the second group of patients and the adults, we know that when patients have unmet hearing needs, they are less likely to get job opportunities. They're more likely to be unemployed. They're more likely to develop depression, to become socially withdrawn. And there are new studies that suggest that here, unmet hearing loss is the biggest modifiable risk factor for dementia. And for all those reasons, it is extremely important that we do not have an upper age limit for doing cochlear implantations. Now, given this is not a major operation that takes somewhere from 60 to 90 minutes, and in special cases can be done under, under a local anesthetic, we've done operations like this in patients who are over 100 years of age. So the internal component is surgically implanted under a general anesthetic. The operation takes 60 to 90 minutes per side. It involves a small cut placed behind the ear that heals with very minimal scarring that is barely noticeable at a year or so. Behind the ear, the small bones are drilled away very delicately to allow specific and direct visual access to the inner ear or the cochlea. The cochlear implant electrode, that is the electric wire of the implant, is very gently and slowly inserted into the cochlea under direct vision. We have special systems monitoring the cochlear or inner ear health as we are inserting it. This allows us direct feedback and a way to minimize any damage done to the inner ear. It also improves the chance that we can save or keep as much of the patient's natural hearing as possible. Once the implant is fully inserted, 
the wound is closed up. We take an X-ray to show, to confirm that the implant is in the right place, and we turn it on and check that it is working well. Finally, the patient can go home four to six hours after the surgery. We can turn the implant on a week or so after surgery. Cochlear implants from the 1980s are, are still working in many of our patients. So they are extremely long lasting. Studies that look at the survival rate of cochlear implants show that over a 20 year period, there is a failure rate of around four to 8%. Most of these failures happen in the first few years. But because failures can happen, and that this is an electrical device, it needs regular checking and tuning by an expert audiologist. Any implant that starts showing signs of poor health can, of course, be removed and replaced with a brand new implant 